So I don't see a lot of people here in the near of the first row with the questions in the hand. Um, but when I was listening to all these presentations, I had some questions, of course. Uh, not only because this is my job <laughs> to have the questions, but also because it's, a, it's a humanly interesting. And, um, and, and the first one for you is that, um, um, that, that really what to do if we see that this abuser is the close person. Um, is there solutions uh, uh, for this to systematically to get this information um, as soon as possible? What is your experience with it? We can ask, we can start from Rita. Rita. Uh, our experience is, is that uh, it happens not so. It takes time and um, that's the problem. So uh, now we have the, the duty to report. So everyone, everyone can do it, but then we have those duties. And um, how uh, to, to understand then it, that it's duty. Uh, uh, it, it's difficult sometimes to tell about it, that it really means that you have to do the report. And uh, for example, the consultation uh, which we have, uh, they concern uh, uh, how to, to report and uh, uh, have I to report in this case and, and so on. And we have had this law now seven years, so it's still a problem. It, co it uh, does not go so that uh, uh, everyone <coughs> reported in Finland. I can't imagine what is the barrier for the specialist to not to tell about. What are these barriers? Why they don't yes, give I, information I, out? I, I, I don't know. I, uh, actually, I don't know. Um, uh, we had so long time uh, um, the rule that uh, uh, they didn't. They uh, uh, don't have it, but has been uh, now uh, seven years and still the practice is a little bit difficult. Thank you. Lemme, what is our experience? Yes, but I, but you, I can understand the story. Yes, I, I think Finnish. a little bit, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, she, saw of, we, we, yeah, she will answer in Estonian. So. Yeah. 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 Aga kus ütleme, meie keskuse töötajatel on siiski nagu mitmete märkide järgi selline veendumus, et laps on väärkohtlemist kogenud ja kus laps võib-olla ka ütleb, et, et kui, kui sa asi läheb politseesse, ma nagu nii ei räägi või, või isegi politsei on selle lapsega rääkinud ja ta laps kõik eitab. Aga väga paljude märkide järgi, mis on pikka aega seal peres olnud, me oleme veendunud, et see väärkohtlemine on ja see lapse lapse seal peres edasi. Ja, et vahel on selline jõuetuse tunne endal, et, et tead, et see ei peaks nii olema. Et sellised juhtumid on meil olnud. Selge. Lemme teate, mul oli tegelikult enne jäi üks küsimus kuidagi, ei, rippuma õhku, video tuli peale, ma ei jõudnud ära küsida. Aga ma tean ühte hiljutist juhtumist, kus kus kasupere sai ene selle lapse kasvatada ja, ja kui nad käisid seda last vaatama sen lastekodus, siis nad olid imestanud selle üle, et kasvatajad hoidsid lastega sellist silmnähtavad selgetist tantsi, et, et, et kas see on... Füüsilist distantsi, ma mõtlen ka sellist normaalset lähedust, et, et kallistada või sülle võtta, et seda, ja kui nad küsisid selle kohta, et miks see nii on, siis öeldi, et, et sellega tegelikult äh, hooldajad ise äh, kaitsevad ise ennast, et kas see on nii ja 
Kas juhul, kui laps lastekudus tõepoolest niisugust normaalselt füüsilist lähedust ei tunnegi, kas see võib ka tema arengule mingil maal pärssivalt mõjuda? Ma alustaks selle küsimuse esimesest poolest, et kuna ma olen tugikeskuses palju aastaid töötanud, siis ma olen näinud fantastilis inimesi, kes asenduskodudes töötavad ja Ja kes muretsevad laste pärast ja kes käivad nende lastega meie asutuses. Ma kõigepealt tahaks öelda, et on väga-väga toredaid inimesi. Aga kui selle juttu teise poole juurde tulla, siis ma arvan, et asenduskodude lapsed vajavad väga palju füüsilist lähedust, hellust, sest et See, miks nad on asenduskodudes ju sattunud, on see, et nad ei ole seda saanud ja nad on pindumussuhte äirega lapsed, mis tõttu ka mõnikord neile on raske seda lähedust anda, sest nendel lastel puudub oskus seda lähedust vastu võtta. Ja see on jällegi see koht, kus ma leian, et asenduskodude töötajad vajaksid sellist vahel api ja toetust, et kuidas selle lapsega seda teha. Ma tean, et üks grupp inimesi andis Eestis tõlke raamatu välja kindumussuhte häirega lastest ja nende apistamisest. See on nii tore, et Eesti keeles selline raamat on, kus asenduskodude töötajad saavad häid mõtteid. Suur tänu, nii et nõnda on mõnikord, et kuuled midagi erandlikku ja see tegelikult ei käi kõigi koota, nii et vaatlemata on. See oli lihtsalt minu, noh, näide minu elust enesest. Aga I want to ask the very first question from you all of as well. About what to do that we can get this message earlier and is it possible at all? All this information about abusement. If the abuse is at the home, it's very difficult for the child to give a disclosure about sexual abuse because uh, children are survivors, so uh, they know what they have. They don't know what they get if they tell the story. Um, according to Icelandic law, we have quite strong uh, child protective law to protect the child. So if a child tells about the sexual abuse at the home, uh, since 2002, um, then the child is, you have to, the Child Protection Service has to secure the child. So usually they take, uh, or the perpetrator have to leave the home if the mother is supportive and non-offending. So then uh, the mother takes care of the child at the child's home. Before 2002, we took the child from the home mm. to secure the child, make the child secure, and who is the problem then? The child is the problem. So that's very important that the child is, stays at home and the problem is taken out of the home. So that's what we do. But I think the problem is getting the children who are abused at home to tell their story. And I think we can do better because uh, the statistics show that in Iceland that only 15% of children are abused at their home by their stepfathers and fathers or older siblings. So uh, we need to get the information to the children and tell them more about what will happen afterwards when you are telling about the sexual abuse. Thank you. Sama küsimus teile. Puhume oma seadusandlusega siis liigume. Kas me soodustame varasemalt teatamist? Milline on teie kogemus? I wouldn't want to disappoint you, but I actually don't deal with the contact pedophile, so my expertise is connected to the internet, and in such cases, the link between the perpetrator and the child is not from home. They are normally people they don't know, and they get to know through internet. So, so this is not actually not a question for me. Yeah, but then I can say it a little bit different way that. How do you feel? Um, do you, no, oh, not, not only feeling, but 
you know the data that uh, are these abusements uh, uh, quite early, uh, uh, let's say, received by the authorities? That there were something where you no, need to focus. No, uh, uh, I will talk about that um, in more detail in my presentation. But uh, in that case, is normally the child itself, um, uh, he or she doesn't feel that uh, she's a victim because uh, she's talking about the things she really wants to know. And uh, this is the scheme that the pedophile or the manipulator or the person who is talking in the Internet uh, with the child and whose interests uh, is the child in certain age is uh, using. Uh, I am talking with you with on, the, on the subjects you take interest in. So uh, in these relationships, uh, uh, the child doesn't uh, feel like a victim and uh, he or she normally doesn't go to report it anywhere. Uh, in many cases, hide it and uh, keep it as their little secret. So um, in the worst case scenarios, uh, the authorities get to know about these kinds of uh, abuse when the child and the uh, perpetrator actually meet and there has been a more serious crime against the child, uh, sexual abuse or, or so on. And then we get to know, but, uh, but uh, as in Estonia, uh, so it is in uh, other countries, we normally don't get to know about those crimes committed against children in the Internet. You hear it also about uh, the, the, the other uh, countries' uh, um, legal system. There was most of the presentators made at least some hints about it, some a bit more and some a bit less. Do you feel that there is something in our legal system which needs to be changed because of the other European system, or we already have uh, everything as, as everyone else? Uh, no. I can say, uh, I can't say uh, that we have everything like everyone else, but I think that uh, in our penal uh, code, uh, those uh, sections that we have that uh, deal with it, uh, this uh, crime are sufficient enough. The thing is that uh, do we have enough uh, resources to investigate that kinds of crimes? That's the thing. But the uh, uh, penal code itself, it's, uh, it's similar to other countries' uh, uh, penal codes when it uh, comes to these uh, paragraphs. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have questions now? You have. I will give the microphone for you. For you. Tervist Meelis Kukk ja Eesti Asenduskodu Töötajateliit. Mul on küsimus Islandile, et kui te muutsite seda nõusoleku hea vanust niile teistkümnele, viie teistkümnele, et kuidas see õnnestus, et ma tean, et meil Eestis mõni aeg tagasi üritati seda iga tõsta ka ei läinud läbi ja Soomes on minule üllatuseks, et see vanus on 16, et kas see on juba pikka aeg olnud kehti või see on ka lähi minevikus muutunud. Sorry, I didn't get any translation. Okay. So, uh, can there, you there translate? Was a, <laughs> there was a question about the age that uh, uh, age from 14 uh, to the 15 you have now the change mm -hmm. that we can say that uh, there was a child abused and also there was a question for Rita that uh, uh, that uh, there was a question for Rita as well, that uh, how did you make this change that you have this level of the age on the 16? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how it was possible and did you see any barriers uh, during this process? We have still it on 14. So, so you have still 14, yeah. Yes, we have still 14. Yeah. Do I need it? I, I, no. no. <laughs> Too hungry already. <laughs> Thank you for that question, because it's very important, because uh, it was a, quite a debate in Iceland about this higher this uh, rate, but uh, it was quite a fight about it, because it's very important, because if you look at younger than 14, there is so much difference in 14 and 15, because you are uh, finishing a, a special school grade in Iceland. So the difference is humongous. So uh, there was also a debate if we should go all the way to 16. Uh, but we went this middle way. And 
I f what I feel and what I can see is that the children can tell that I'm not allowed to have sex until 15. So they use it um, as a weapon. Uh, and we have to teach them that 15 is the barrier. So I think 15 is a good age. And uh, also I can see the difference in the developmental of children from 14 to 15. So I think it's a, a good step to do that. And um, maybe we can discuss if it should be 16, but I'm satisfied with 15. I think it's good. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the age of consent uh, in Finland is uh, eight, uh, is 16. But if um, the perpetrator and the child lives together, for example, if uh, the perpetrator is father or mother, parents or some other person there, then uh, the age of, of the consent is uh, 18. So it can be sexual abuse of a child as a crime, as a name of a crime, uh, when the child is uh, 16 or 17, when the perpetrator lives together with the child. But then, as I talked before, uh, I find incest cases also those cases where the perpetrator actually don't <coughs> live, uh, don't have the same address, but is so close with uh, the child and uh, visit every day. Uh, the family and, and spent nights there and so on. Then the age is 16, 17. We also, if I can add to that, we also have that in Iceland. Yeah. We have 18 if you are teaching the child, if you are um, living in the same home or if you are um, a coach or if, you, if your work is working with children, then it's 18. Um. Do we have some discussion between prosecutors in Estonia about this, what it needs to be the age? It's off now. We had this discussion and not anymore. It should be the discussion between the politicians. <laughs> what prosecutors discuss in their cabinets, it normally stays there. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we have different kinds of discussions, but uh, so far we, we go with the law. It's 14 and so it is. But, but you as a specialist, if, if the politician will ask advice, your advice, then what could be your advice? To hire it or to keep it in the same level? I would say it's not my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for your diplomatic answer. I understand you're the state worker. I've been so. Sama küsimus on lemme teile. Mida teie arvate sellest vaidlusest ja riikide erinevast kogemusest? Kuna mina ei ole kuskil riiklikus süsteemis tööl, siis ma ei pea niimoodi tasakaalustatult ja delikaatselt vastama, et mina vastan, et see peaks olema 15 ikkagi vähemalt põhikooli lõpuni. Et kui korjati allkirju, siis laste tugikeskus kirjutas alla sellele, et tõsta aasta. Ja ma olen kolleegiga nõus selles mõttes, et me ei saa kogu puberteidi iga kõik kokku võtta, et ka seal on omad astmed ja tegelikult 14 ja 15 aastase vahel on päris suur sellise abstraktse mõtlemise ja kogu see muutus lapse arengus, et 15 aastane on küpsem kui 14 aastane. Et sellel on oma arengulised põhjused. Aitäh, kas te saite enne selle vastuse läbi meie ja välismaiste ekspertide? Aitäh, kas on veel publikuseast küsimusi? Isegi julgelt vaadake inimesed on valmis vastama. Jaa, siin, ma arvan mikrofon edasi. Aitäh, Gerda Kiipleelma perekutus. Minul oli küsimus ka Islandile, et toetavad ohvreid, toetavad ka alajalisi seksuaalkurjatekijaid. Kas nad nõustavad ja ravivad ka neid? Kas te õige jõudis? Võib-olla 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 võib-ol
Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have treatment in Children's House for young perpetrators. But we have in Iceland, <clears throat> uh, Children's House is um, under government agency for child protection. Uh, and they also run a program for young offenders. And then we have uh, three psychologists who are uh, doing assessment and treatment for young offenders. And it's very important that they get treatment when they are so young because you can change their behavior. And sometimes if the, the perpetrator or the young offender, we usually don't use the name young offender or perpetrator because that's stigmatizing. So we use children with unexpected sexual behavior or something like that. Uh, what we do is that if they are in the family of the victim and the victim is ready when they have been through treatment, we sometimes reunite with the, the victim and the, the young offender. Uh, when the young offender comes with his psychologist and the psychologist who is working with the victim, they try to let them meet and talk and see how the future will be. Uh, if the victim wants to do that. Because when it's in the families, it's always a problem. So we want the family to, you know, the big family living together or, or they can meet without having some um, problems there. You had the answer. Do someone from the panelists want to add something into this topic? <laughs> no? Uh, then... Uh, Next question is there, I see already. Yeah? Te ette minu oma on kindlam, vaadake, mul on, ma vaatan, et ma räägin, 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 laske, ma proovin, ma võibolla on teie juures mingi levi jauk, aga ei ole, ei ole, nii et see mikrofon lihtsalt töötab paremini. Aitäh, Tuuli Ploom Justiitsministeriumist, et minul ei ole küsimust, mul on remark, mis puudutab seksuaalse enesemäärimise hea piiri, siis tegelikult juba ligi aasta aega on ka Eesti riigis nendel juhtudel, kus siis üks seksuaalpartneritest on täisealine, teine aga on, ütleme niipidi, et kui see täisealine seksuaalpartner on õpetaja, treener või mingis muus, mingil muul viisil, kuri tarvitatakse usaldussuhet, mõjuvõimu või midagi muud sellist, siis juba ligi aasta aega on ka Eestis see jaapiir 18. Et üldine jaabiir on meil jah endiselt 14, aga ligi aastaega on meil olemas sellest erand. Ja ühtlasi tahaks ma rõhutada ka seda, et nendeks, mis puudutab intsesti, siis tegelikult kogu Eesti vabariigi aja on intsesti pool igasugused eaalised piirid puudunud. Ehk siis intsesti juhtu mitte puhul ei ole üle üldse oluline, kui vanad põhjad need seksuaalsuhtes olijad on. Aitäh. Suur tänu, aitäh, täpselt oma märkuse eest, tegi pildi klaarimaks. Ja kuna ma seisan siin vahe käigus, siis mul on kohe hetk võimalus anda mikrofoniga siit keskel. Ai, ja näete, ongi üks käsi on püsti. Teie soovite ka, jah? Ei. Aga teie soovisite esimese on egal juhul, nii et ma annan mikrofoni siit poolt teile. Tere, Urve Karp Porkuni kool. Küsimus on suunatud übra Lemme Haldrele. Islandil on võimalik turvatud keskkonnas lapse ühekordne küsitemine ja intervjueerimine. Mida saavad siis kasutada teise tuvigruppid, politsei, lastekaitse? See tähendab, et laps ei pea korduvalt rääkima. Kas selline lähenemine on olemas ka Eestis? Kas selline koht või kohad on Eestis olemas ka praktikas väärkoheldud lapse ära kuulamiseks? Ma vastan nii palju, kui ma oskan, et Eestis sellist laste 
Parnahaust tüüpi maja ei ole, aga kuna Eestis lapse seksuaal väärkohtlemise puhul, kui näiteks meie keskus saab seda teada või meile meid teavitatakse, siis me siiski teavitame politseid, kus on siis politseitööted on siin, kes ümselt oskavad paremini rääkida. Eestis on ju laste toad, laste küsitlemise toad, kes teevad esimese vestluse seal. Meil on Tartus politseiga selline kokkulep, et psühholoog alguses ei sekku, kui on esimene interviu tehtud, siis kui on vaja, siis politsei suunab meile kriisiabiks või teraapiaks edasi. Praegu on see muutunud, kui meie tegime varem lapse küsitlemist, siis praegu seadus ei luba meil seda esimest küsitlemist teha. Aga võibolla on siin teisi spetsialiste, kes oskavad paremini vastata selle küsimusele. Ma võin täpselt teha. Selles mõttes, et jutt õige, et meil käib küsitlemine kriminaalmenetluse raames ja alajäälise tunnistaja kannatanu küsitlemiseks on eri reeglid ja ka meil on põhimõtte selline, et vaid ükskord võimalusel kuuletakse last üle, et vältida tema täiendavad traumeerimist siis läbi ülekuulamise ja selline ülekuulamine toimubki laste jaoks spetsiaalselt kohandatud toas spetsialisti läbiviimisel, ehk siis need politseametnikud, kes sellist last ülekuulavad, on eri koolitusega, nad on õppinud lapsi ülekuulama, nad oskavad küsimusi esitada. Mu hulgas sellele, et nad on väga pädevad ka karistusõiguse ja kriminaalmenetluse alal, et vältida siis igasuguseid vigasid, mis võiks ülekuulamise käigus tekkida et oleks tingitud siis täiendav ülekuulamine. Selline ülekuulamine videos alvestatakse ning hiljem kohtus reeglina ei pea laps tulema uuesti ütlusi andma. Nii et ka meil on see põhimõtte, et vaid üks kord last ülekuulata. Still, I have the question for the all of that. Why you used a bit different system? That why you don't use the trained professional police officers, a differently trained police officer, but you use the other way, the <coughs> psychologists, and they can hear the, the police workers' uh, questions into the ear. <coughs> Why I, so? Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we actually uh, work in Children's House. We have this training called Forensic Interviewing Training from US. So we go and train us in, in US for a, for a week or so. And then we have actually a long experience in interviewing children. We cooperate with the police, so we know everything they need to know in the interview. And all those participants are, you know, in another room. Uh, there has been some debate about that. Of course, some po police are specially trained to talk to children too. But we think in Iceland that when you have information about development, children development, you know we have a lot of children who have Asperger and, and very young children and they have uh, some and children with disabilities. It's very important to know what you can ask of a child. Uh, how can a three and a half year old disclose about sexual abuse? It's very important that you know the ability of a child, how can they disclose according to their age, the disabilities and so on. So that's why we use it that way. And the cooperation between prosecution and the child protection service and the police is very important. Sometimes we get a list from the police, all those uh, uh, questions are relevant and then they can always talk to us through the earplug we have in our ear. Thank you very much. Suur tänu teile ka. Palun aplausi meie panelistidele.